Hello and welcome back, this is Spike Viper and we're back with Universe Sandbox 2. Today we are going to be taking a suggestion from... Super Witter 50 If you want your suggestion picked next time, just plop it in the comments. And today we are going to be switching the Sun's position with the Earth and seeing the effect that has on the rest of the uh, solar system in general. We can expect to see some interesting results, including the death of everyone. But that's always fun. So we're going to start off with a real-time simulation of it all, and of course we're going to actually, no, we're not going to use that one because that has all of the moons of Jupiter and Saturn, which will cause crazy lag. So where is our normal solar system? Just, just solar system. There it is. That's what we wanted. For some reason it's giving me little pop-ups. I'm so used to this game in VR now, it's kind of weird playing it normally. Um, if you want to see a video of that, they are on my channel. I do have like two videos of VR Universe Sandbox 2 and it is certainly interesting. There we are, we've got the Earth in the position of the Sun. And now we've got the Sun in the position of the Earth. Obviously the Sun is not going to play very nice with all of the uh, planets and or objects on the solar system and we're going to see things get very strange very quickly starting with the well temperatures are going to drop quickly but it takes some time for that to happen so the first thing we're going to notice is everything in the solar system is going to have its velocity completely thrown for a loop because they are no longer being attracted to the Sun in the same spot they are going to be thrown in a curve towards the Sun and most importantly they are going to be flung especially Mars right here getting very or Venus is getting even closer to the Sun uh, may actually get ripped apart by the Roche limit where it has so much gravitational force that it actually gets physically ripped apart but it looks like that we're actually going to be hitting the Sun and Venus is now gone there goes one planet How's Earth doing? Earth back in its normal position. We've got the temperature pretty normal, actually. Not much is happening to Earth at the moment. Mars is having a good time, though. Heating up now at 400 degrees Celsius. It is speeding towards the sun. I do not think Mars is going to hit the sun. I think it's just going to get ripped apart a little bit and flung to the outer edges of the solar system. There it goes. So Mars has avoided total destruction, although it looks, eh, no, Mars looks pretty much normal. It looks like the rush limit, it, uh, it didn't hit the rush limit, and we can also see that its mass is pretty normal, although it is still nice and toasty from what happened. Earth's temperature is tumbling as the sun moves further and further away. Mercury is just going in a random direction. Jupiter is probably going to get attracted to the sun because of its high mass, but the sun is traveling so quickly now, I don't know if we can actually stop at anything. Uh, well, if Jupiter is ever going to catch up. I don't even know why the sun is moving so quickly. We didn't have any uh, massive objects in this simulation for it to get attracted to like that. Huh. Very strange. The sun is moving at 40 kilometers per second, which makes me think that I actually made a mistake here. So let's try this again and see if we have the same results. If we delete the Earth and the sun, put the Earth in the sun's position, and get the sun and put it in the Earth's position. Oh, we had it set to orbit. That's why, that's why we had that problem. That problem, yep, we don't want it to start with any speed, and now we're going to see something a little bit more uh, accurate in what was expected was for the sun to barely be pulled around by the planets, and the planets to be completely pulled off course by the sun. Uh, their orbits are changing, and, wow, Mercury and Venus got very close together there. Uh, they actually may survive as long as they don't go straight at the sun, Earth is dead because the sun is stationary, so 
with the sun being stationary, the earth is going to take its place in being stationary and be accelerated towards the sun at an increasing rate. Now at 152 degrees, the earth's oceans are beginning to boil. You can see Australia, Oceania, just the world in general. Uh, a lot less ocean. We're getting very close to the surface of the sun and there actually isn't enough time to allow the liquid to evaporate. Uh, sublimation is probably going through in the polar regions and any second now, Earth has hit the sun. Now interestingly enough, that was a fast enough collision that we do have a visual impact on the sun probably after messing a little bit with the Earth's magnetic field, we would be able to see a few solar flares or uh, just general unstable uh, behavior of the sun. But it probably wouldn't be this drastic with the sun noticeably changing its hue. Venus and Mars are still orbiting the sun at very eccentric orbits. Um, Venus is being ripped apart very slowly and it's getting very very warm as it does so we're hitting in the thousands of degrees temporarily Mars is also getting very close and now Jupiter is the one I was interested in most it looks like Jupiter is still going to stay very far outside so it looks like the only planet we're really going to lose is Mercury who has been flung into the expanse of space, but for the most part, the solar system has stayed the same. We've lost Mercury, Earth was destroyed, our orbits are much more eccentric and seemingly random. However, things aren't super different. I mean, yeah, they've changed, but yeah. Okay, so there's one more variation we can do of this, because this one had both Earth and the Sun not having any velocity. But, let's find the velocity of the Earth moving through space, which is going to be 30 kilometers per second. And we're going to actually have the Sun moving in the direction the Earth would have been moving. <clears throat> so, Earth completely still, Sun right where Earth was. Except, let's give the sun the motion. Ah, we gotta go kilometers. But it actually needs a direction, doesn't it? So we're going to unpause for one second to get it a direction. And then we're going to go into 30 kilometers per second, just like Earth. And to make sure it's going in the correct direction, we're going to go into edit and do the old pull the arrow in the general location. And that looks about right for where Earth would have been heading. I mean, I think that's a little bit better. Yep, that's going to be it. The mass of the sun means it has so much inertia that there's really no stopping it now. Um, it's just going to go on its way. Looks like Venus, once again, is going to be pulled right into the sun. Look at that. How very sad. <laughs> A great planet has fallen. Smacking right into the surface of the sun. We do have a visual change again. And let's see. Continuing, the sun is going to suck in Mars. Mars also hit the sun this time. Wow, bad luck. Vesta gets flung away. Ceres gets flung away. Earth is scooting around. And actually, it's probably close enough to the sun that the temperature is staying slightly above freezing. It's at 5 degrees. It's still dropping. But it's closer to the sun uh, than it could have been, so it's not freezing quite as quickly. We can actually watch the freezing occur on the surface. Watch as the Ice Age slowly comes back. Uh, yeah, basically everything is now a part of either Antarctica or the North Pole um, as they slowly spread over the land. 
Though something has happened to warm up Earth, and what is that? I think we got to the closest point to the sun in its orbit, which means that with this new orbit, even though Earth is further away from the sun, let's see, is it going to stop cooling down at one point in its orbit? Are we stuck at negative 25 degrees Celsius? Yes, we are. So the lowest we're going to hit, never mind. There it goes. Could humanity try to survive this? Well, possibly. We're still orbiting the sun. So the one thing we could attempt is to increase the amount of heat we are retaining. In order to do this, we'd have to increase greenhouse gases gases substantially so let's do that checking the temperature the surface temperature is effectively negative 42 degrees but if we were to let's quadruple oh shoot uh, did it keep that yeah let's quadruple the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and we can see that we are actually oh oh let's see uh, the temperature is staying a little bit more stable, but it's not yet heating up. So let's go much, much more than that. No. I'm not sure that we can really get an amount of carbon dioxide. Here we go. We can see the temperature is now rising. And we can grab a graph for the temperature. It appears that... Is it going to steady out as we get further away from the sun? It's dropping a bit, but will it overall go up? Let's see. No, we have a quick dive back down. It's getting colder than ever. And as the Earth gets closer to the sun, we have a bit of a return, but will it go up to where it was before? Oh, maybe it will. It'll go even higher, going up to... It looks like 38 degrees, but I think we have actually succeeded in what we needed to do, which if we delete everything else in this simulation, because we're not paying attention to that, boop, it'll just make it run a bit faster. What we really want here is to create a cycle where it'll slowly heat up and continue to do so. So we want it to go Basically, we want the opposite of what we'd want in real life. We want it to have a runaway uh, reaction where it just keeps getting hotter and hotter and hotter every year because then we can stabilize it after we've gotten back to a normal temperature. It looks like we are within the part where we can cause that to occur. The problem is the simulation speed is kind of dead. Um, can we fix that? by deleting a ton of particles, possibly. But sometimes even cleaning up the entire simulation isn't quite enough. But you know what? Overall, uh, maybe humanity would find a way to survive this. I mean, oh, look at that. It looks like we've got the speed up and it looks like we are actually ranging quickly graph that we're going from negative 90 degrees all the way up to negative 14 degrees at the hottest if we were to allow a little bit more heat in by tweaking the albedo we'd basically just raise that a bit we don't want people to be burning in the summer um how hot is this in the summer 30 degrees Celsius, yes, that's a little bit too high. So we'd have to do a lot of tweaking and figure it out. But maybe humanity could make it, possibly. There's just so much of a divergence between the hottest and coldest parts of this. And it looks like the sun and earth aren't exactly in a stable relationship here. Because it looks like temperatures are slowly going up and that Earth is getting closer to the sun. I can't be sure of... Yeah, I can be sure of that because we just saw it. Look at it go up. That is slightly worrying. Oh, look at those beautiful designs going through because of all the lines intersecting. Well, I guess that's all interesting. 
Thank you for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this episode. And as always, leave your suggestions for what to do next in the comment section below. Bye. Technically, at some point, Earth is going to hit the sun. I just don't know when. Looks like the atmosphere is slowly being ripped off, too. That's a slight problem.